now. All right, welcome again, everybody, to uh, today's webinar. We're thankful to have you all here uh, for our third session of four that we have slated so far. Uh, my name is Caleb Talley. I'm the executive director of the Startup Junkie Foundation. For those of you who may not be familiar with the organization, we are a nonprofit, mission-driven organization based in Northwest Arkansas. We exist uh, to serve innovators, entrepreneurs, small business owners, anybody with an idea written on the back of a napkin up to entrepreneurs, small business owners generating $25 million in revenue. Um, we do that through consulting, one-on-one -on -one consulting, workshops, events, networking events, things just like this that you're attending today. Um, so we're so grateful to have you here. And if you have any interest in learning more about what we do, you can look us up on our website, startjunkie.org. Uh, and you can sign up for a consulting meeting or, or look for future events there. We're excited to have uh, Allison Lewis back with us today uh, for another session, this time on time management, stopping the chaos. Allison is the CEO and Director of Learning and Innovation of The 7 Minute Life. The 7 Minute Life is a time management company with a mission to reconnect daily productivity, human potential, and meaningful work. It's just going to talk all about that today with you. Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Allison. Well, I'm delighted to have everybody here today. I know some other people are going to come in. You're going to want to grab a pen and a piece of paper because I'm going to have you drawing today. Um, if you've been in one of the classes, I'd like to get chat going by just saying yes or no if you haven't been in one of the Allison Lewis seven minute life classes. So yes or no. It's Caleb, have you been in there? Let's get the been going. No, no, no. Oh, I love it. Oh, yes, Caleb Talley. Well, you're in for a treat today. Um, as we open up all of this, I hope you'll ask questions because I'm a 60-ish year old woman who has been a, a really an entrepreneur for a long time. I was with Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch for 30 years, ended up in the top 11% in sales, built a total asset business of $150 million, retired from that, and then decided to create a startup. So I am now have moved from an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur, and it has been an interesting journey. I think that all of us could grab a cup of coffee and say, being an entrepreneur is a lot tougher, especially when it comes to time management, procrastination, living in chaos. And um, so the seven minute life, I actually founded it in 2006. And back in 1995, I was living in chaos and decided to create a single sheet of paper that you're going to have today. And Caleb, if you want to drop that link into chat, feel free to do so. But um, we'll go about 45 minutes and then I hope that you'll be asking questions. Um, from a company standpoint, I think we're crazy if we don't tell people what we do as entrepreneurs. And I'm pretty bad at that. but um, the seven minute life as you hear these things be thinking of organizations that can partner with uh, startup junkie and begin to sponsor these events and foundations because time is life and most of us are absolutely at our wits end and so these types of classes I think Caleb could be very powerful as we go forward and doing all these things so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to jump in um, we have given a, uh, a tool to you. This is part of our learning platform. Um, we've created a university and I'm logging into my library. This is how, this is the technology that we have created. Um, just so you can see a little bit about our startup. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about a tool that I've, I have given to you, but just, what I believe happens with time management, I think the big secret to time management is having tools that can become repeatable. So um, one of the tools that we talk about is the unfinished work task. What's on your list that you haven't been able to accomplish yet, but is driving you crazy. So when you are talking about chaos, this is a tool that I think is important, but today, we're going to be talking about the daily progress report with a to-do list. So this is this handout 
is actually in your chat. Caleb, is that correct? I think this tool is in chat. Feel free to print it off. This is the tool that absolutely uh, changed my life. So I'm gonna go back into PowerPoint. We're gonna be walking through this. Please feel free to chat to, um, I'm not gonna be actually watching all of the chat, but I will try to stay engaged. And, and Caleb, as you see questions, if you'll just have people uh, let me know. Absolutely. The Seven Minute Life is a time management company that has morphed into something more because what we found for me is that time management was more than just a problem. I start every class, if you begin to come to these in the future, you'll see this over and over again. How important is time management if 43 busy was killing me? I was waking up early, going to bed with my laptop in my lap. Um, I was living really surrounded by clutter and chaos, these distractions and interruptions, but it became more of a problem than that. It became a problem that led to disorganization and a true lack of focus. But then it went beyond that. And I think this is where a lot of entrepreneurs are. I think as we look at the entrepreneurial nation, we see that people are struggling with being overwhelmed, stuck, frozen, and exhausted. And it's really even worse than that. This is what we're gonna to try to accomplish today. When I say stop the chaos, what I'm really saying it's let's give you three time management secrets to stop drifting through life. Um, again, it's like people are on a raft in the middle of the ocean, COVID's all around us, the economy. And then if you're trying to start a new business, we feel like the circumstances of life are just taking us wherever they take us. And I believe it's time to put a stake in the ground, learn some skill sets and really reclaim your day. So that's my objective. A little bit about me. Again, I was at Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch for 31 years. Time management is a huge problem. I began to write books out of research. I didn't intend to write the books, but as you realize how big a problem this is, and it was a problem for me, I began to read books. Well, the problem with books is they make great paperweights, but people don't really read books. What I think the statistic is they read 18 pages of a book. Um, and I know that's true for me. And so I believe we have to have this conversation back and forth. That's why Startup Junkie is so important. When he says create consultations with them, Caleb means it. Go in and have a meeting, get on a Zoom call, look at their resources. They have been a huge help to me. I've received tax credits from the state of Arkansas. So when we raise money, the state actually gives our investors money back. There are so many things that we just don't know about. So please stay in touch with Startup Junkie. But this isn't just a problem for people. This is a real problem for companies. So here's where the learning begins. The first thing I'd like you to write down is that time is your most valuable currency. Time is life. When you woke up this morning, did you have a clear idea of where you wanted to be by noon today? Because the hours that have passed are now gone and we can't reclaim those. So if time is always moving forward and this is the beginning of every day and this is the end of every day, I want to talk about the importance of either we're gonna wake up and create some kind of plan of action or we're gonna blink our eyes and the day is going to be gone. If time is always moving forward, then we need time management skills. And I believe the number one skill that you're gonna to learn today is how do I take the right action? How do I wake up knowing what I need to accomplish? How can I create a better to-do list? And how can I do things that'll make life meaningful? And I create, you know, you saw some of these things, but I've created these print tools because I still think it's really important, I can't find a pen, but to use a pen and a piece of paper, which is what I hope you're gonna do. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about the daily progress report. 
in the last class. And Caleb, I don't know how they can get a copy of the last webinar that we talked about. How, how can they get it's, that? It's on our YouTube and I'll link it to uh, my follow-up email to everybody that registered. So last time we talked about 90 day personal goals. And again, these classes are completely free. Share these uh, with your team members. And we'll be talking about other classes going forward. How do you find your priorities in life? That impacts your time management. What's holding you back? Uh, but today we're gonna be talking about um, the daily progress report. So there are three objectives that I have first, how do you stop the chaos in your life? How do you stop having busy killing you? I think that's the number one problem that people don't see is the mental health implications of being too busy. The second thing that we're going to talk about is how can seven minutes, which is our secret sauce, become a life-changing habit that can solve these three time management secrets. So since they're secrets, you have to pay attention to the class, isn't that a great thing that a teacher does? Is we don't tell you what all of them are, so we're gonna leave that in, um, in for the future. Um, so here's the problem. You know, as a business owner, they talk about understanding the problem of your clients. And until you really have a big enough problem to solve, that your business has to have a great solution to solve that problem. So this is the problem we feel like we're solving. I believe that there's chaos everywhere, that people are overwhelmed, disorganized, you're constantly interrupted, too much to do and not enough time. So I'd like you to draw this hourglass on a sheet of paper. I wanna talk about the problem first. So if, if, and you can tell I'm a really great artist, if you can draw this hourglass on your sheet of paper. Time management begins with the to-do list. You have to take it out of your head and put it on a written piece of paper. When I'm coaching executives or teaching in a workshop, on average, I'll take a poll and most people have roughly 15 things on their to-do list. And that's everything from personal to business to things that you don't want to forget. So these 15 things, if we were actually in a workshop, I'd have you write them down and you'd have this really neatly organized list. You know, here's, here's an example of one of my to-do lists uh, for yesterday, but it may look organized, but here's the problem. I would like to just give you a visual of if you have 15 things on your to-do list, and let's say that this is today, it's not as simple. I'm going to take one thing like this webinar for me today is one to do that goes into my day. Well, that one to do is taking up an hour of my time, but not really, because prior to that, I spent a full two hours making sure that everything was prepped for this. So just those two tasks have taken up three hours of my workday. So look at your to do list right now. How many things have you worked on that have already taken up the first four hours of your day? And how many things do you still have left on your to-do list? So these were just two. Let me continue to draw three, four, five to do, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And when I'm coaching someone or teaching them, I want them to physically draw in these things. So, just if you can draw in, even if they're not real, because what you're beginning to see there is a concept or a principle that is the key problem that we call the choke point of time management. Is that you have so many things coming into your day that you can't get any of them done. It's like you wake up in the morning, you blink your eyes, five o'clock is here and you've accomplished nothing. And it's because we've been constantly interrupted. We have too much to do. We have so many things going on, you know, that it's just impossible. It's impossible to get things done. So what do you do when you're in the choke point? When I talk about the chaos, I'm gonna make it even worse. It's not just that you have those 15 things going on. It's that you have a gazillion emails that have come in. You have text messages that have come in. Okay, so I'm going to uh, mute 
I'm going to mute the entrance and exit if I can. Um, so I've turned off the play join, Caleb. You'll have to just watch because now all of a sudden I was um, distracted. Okay, so it's not just the 15 things on your to-do list. It's actually all of the emails. It's the text messages that come in. Can you see how serious this choke point is? And then let's say it's a new day. If you didn't get all these things done yesterday, now you've got new things coming into your choke point plus what didn't happen yesterday. Again, in chat, if you will, just say, yes, this is a prime. It's a yes or no question. I just wanna make sure people are hearing what I'm saying. Yes, the choke point, I get it. So yes, I get it. Um, I have this problem still. This is the problem. This is what causes not just chaos, but it actually causes mental health issues, which is a big, big problem. So how do we begin to solve for that? You know, as an entrepreneur, when you look at your business, is the problem that you're trying to solve a big enough problem that people are going to be willing to pay you to solve that problem? So as part of our plan, we hope to actually come to insurance companies and to make this pitch to Blue Cross Blue Shield and to other places and say, this is a big enough problem that we hope that these types of tools will help you solve the problem. So here's how you solve the problem. There's one of my favorite authors and speakers, Jim Rohn, who was popular, gosh, I don't know, probably 50 years ago. And he came in and he said, there's a formula for failure. And the formula for failure is simply a few errors in judgment repeated every day. So some errors that I see, not enough sleep, not having a plan of action, not setting clear goals, not knowing exactly how to prioritize your task. But the good news is he said, the formula for success is a few simple disciplines. That's what I'm gonna show you, those three secrets. I've shown you the problem. But now, how do you solve that problem with some simple disciplines? And how can you repeat it every day? And even better, how can you do that with no background training in seven minutes a day? So here's how. The why seven minutes, there are 24 hours in a day. That's it. Time is our most valuable resource. We're going to wake up in the day. We're going to end the day. And the day is going to be gone. We're going to put all these things into our to-do list and we have to ask ourselves, do they even matter? Are they the right to-do list? And here's why it's so important. Every single thing that you let into your day is automatically knocking something else out. Let me just say that one more time. Every single action you let into your day is automatically knocking something else out. And what I think it knocks out is sleep, exercise, laughter, you know, being able to watch the Razorback Auburn game tonight. Woohoo! Um, all of those kind of things. What are we missing out on? So if they're 24 hours in a day, that breaks down into 1,440 minutes. I think you can see where this is going. The secret sauce of the seven minute life starting today with the single sheet of paper is we're gonna share the concept that changed my life. When I say it's a life changing concept, what would happen if you could learn how to take just 14 minutes a day? 14 minutes is 1% of 1,440 uh, minutes, seven minutes in the morning and seven minutes in the evening to create a time management process that could change everything about what you're doing. If time is constantly moving forward, the most important thing that we need to do is be intentional about what we do. Life is how we spend our time. I'm gonna share with you these five principles that break into the three secrets. In the seven minutes, all we have to learn to do is leverage 1% of our time so that we can spend the remaining 99% doing things that matter. But there's some skills that we have to learn. I think we're so busy, we haven't learned how to think about what's most important. 
we need to clarify. One of my investors, um, advisor, one of my advisors has said to me, Allison, until you can clarify and articulate your North Star for your business, then you're never going to go anywhere. Our North Star is to help people reclaim the minutes of their day so they can live a life with purpose and with meaning. They can re-engage in life. You can find happiness and fulfillment. That's our clarified goal. Think about if you were to take seven minutes to clarify how you should spend your time, what would that look like? And then you've got to have a plan. What are you going to do today? How do you prioritize the tasks on your list? And how do you choose what's most important? Remember, every single task that you let into your day is automatically knocking something else out. Now, marketing is incredibly important, but let me give you a great example. I have a fairly decent sized social media following. But if I spend an hour on Canva trying to create the perfect post that's going to go out to 8,000 people or however many people, I'm going to get a lot less bang for my buck than if I picked up the phone and called a prospect that I knew was really key. Well, in two hours of creating a Canva post, I can probably call 10 people. You know, when it comes to sales, we have to really spend our time. So think about what is the best use of your time whenever you're doing something and then create a written plan of action. So here we go. The number one secret is that you have to have a written plan of action. We see a lot of people that do what I call mental planning or shower planning. And that's when you wake up in the morning, you hop in the shower, a thousand things that you could do run through your mind but you're not really sure of the most important things. As an entrepreneur, we have to speak honestly that we have to generate revenue. Bottom line is, are the actions you're taking today gonna lead to growing your revenue? So the secret is you have to have a written plan of action. This is what I created back in the 90s. I did it for me as a financial advisor. I knew I needed a tool to grow my business. And I wanted, remember Jim Rohn said, it's daily disciplines. So it's in the chat. I know that um, Caleb will be sending this out to you, but it is so simple. If you have a pen, either if, you, if you've printed this out, great. If not, you can draw it. The daily progress report is an accountability tool for me. I can look at this single sheet of paper. You just print it out every day. And I can look at it and begin to ask myself some questions and it becomes predictive. So let me walk you through that. Each one of these components that you see here, we use like real estate. We've allocated this page to pieces. So you'll see that there is a series of components in here and I'm gonna walk you through those. The number one secret is you've gotta have some kind of tool to keep you on pace. So how do you use this? And it's being sent to you, so you don't have to do anything to, to access it. The first thing that I would encourage you to do after you've printed that off is to circle in today's date and then put, I think today is the 8th, uh, February 8th, 2022. The first thing that we have to do is take ownership of our day. We have to recommend, I mean, understanding that even if people are putting pressure on us, we have to aware with intention, say today, at least, at least today, I'm going to be aware. I'm going to be aware of my business goals, my personal goals, my own health. So the first secret is using some kind of tool and being serious about being intentional about it. So let me walk you through the repeatable processes and systems of how you use this. So the way that you take this daily progress report is to understand and begin to create skills. And this is where the second secret is, we have to have time management skills of being able to use processes. So as, as crazy as it sounds, this piece of paper increased my own revenue by 62% in one year. And here's how I used it. Every day I knew that I had to call 
prospects. And I think we lose sight of the fact that we can't just rely on social media or can't rely on word of mouth. We've got to pick up the phone and call people. My daily plan was to grow my business. So I had to sell something. On average, I found that the average financial advisor was making nine outbound calls a day. That's one an hour, roughly. I was 22 years old when I started. I began to ask myself what would happen to my business if instead of one call an hour, I made two calls an hour. And I kept track of it. So every morning I would walk in and I would ask myself, what makes my company money? Caleb, I hope I'm not offending anyone by saying that revenue is what drives business, but we have to, is that offensive? No, he's shaking his head. No, it's not offensive. Okay, well, I'm glad it's not offensive because I think the first question we have to ask every morning is how am I going to grow my business? What is going to generate revenue today? It's a simple question, but we forget because we get so busy in the choke point. So every morning I would wake up and the very first thing I would do is create a list of prospects. I know entrepreneurs have other things to do, but we have got to talk to people about our products and services. We've got to tell people what we want to do. So when you create your to-do list, again, all of this is on a single sheet of paper. You set a timer for seven minutes. You ask yourself, what is my end goal for today? And it's not always going to be money. It may be fun. It may be I want to plan for a new marketing strategy, whatever it is, but you have to know what the end of the day looks like. What is it that you're spending your time going toward? You create your to-do list. It's all on one single sheet of paper. You write down all of these things that you could do. And you literally, this isn't a nice word. I always regret when I say it, but you literally vomit everything out of your head onto this sheet of paper. Because that mental stuff running through your head is not a plan. It's actually, it holds you back if it's not in a written format. So you may have 15 things. You may have 20, I don't know. Get them out of your head and put them on a piece of paper. That's where most people stop. Here's part of the second secret. Once you've written down the things that you know are going to be important, that are going to grow your business and move you forward, then you have to prioritize them. It's the hardest thing. It's the hardest skill that people need to learn. So let's say that this is the first thing I need to do. The second thing, the third thing, four, five, six, however many things that are on there. Remember all the things that if there are 15 things, you can't get 15 things done. So you have to prioritize them in order of importance. There's another step that a lot of people miss. So you've got to create your to-do list. You have to prioritize them in order of importance. And then you have to have a gut check, a reality check, and ask yourself, how long is each one of these tasks going to take me? So this morning, I've already taught one class. That class took one hour. So if I have eight hours in the day, one hour of it is now gone. The second task that I had was prepping for this. And I really want to create content that is valuable. And I didn't quite spend two hours, but I spent about one and three quarter hours making sure that I had everything done. Task number two, now I've spent almost three hours of my day. Task number three, I have, well, I won't tell you what I have, but I've got videos that I have to edit and meetings that I have to have. I certainly have more things than this, but the concept that I want you to take away is set a timer for seven minutes. Download this sheet of paper day after day after day. Take ownership of the day. Create your to-do list, even if you can't get it all done. Prioritize your task in order of importance and write down how long you think they'll take. So this is a real key. Make sure that you're focusing on the right thing. So let me go back. Number one secret is you've got to have some kind of written tool, a written plan of action. I created one sheet of paper.
to help myself. It's called the Daily Progress Report. Secret number one, you need a tool. You need to know how to use the tool. Secret number two, it needs to be repeatable. Can I find something simple enough that I can do it every day? And so for me, it was creating a to-do list that I could prioritize and then try to take action on. Now, remember, this piece of paper is allocated in chunks. I knew I had to take ownership. I knew I needed a to-do list, but I'm constantly thinking about who, not how. Who do I need to know to grow my business? There's a great book by Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan that's called Who Not How. If we think we can grow our business by just, you know, something like this, there's got to be somebody out there that knows and loves and trusts you that could geometrically grow your business more quickly. Who do you need to know? Who do you already know? Like being in this call, you know, there are 14 of us in this call today. It's a lot easier for me to tell 14 people my story and give them value. So I'm delighted that you're here today. But one of my connections was Caleb Talley. You know, he knows people that I need to know. Who do you need to know? What do you need to learn? Who do you already know? I don't know what business you're in, but I'm in a human resource business. Which human resource people do I know? Who do I know that want to drive well-being? Who do I know at Blue Cross Blue Shield? Create an intentional list of just three people. Pick up the phone and call them. Possibly they're just some people that you need to send a text message to just as a word of encouragement. So I think staying connected is highly important. This unfinished task list, I use it for things like errands. It's unfinished. This is more of a don't forget to do list. Don't forget to do the laundry. Don't forget to pick up the groceries. Don't forget to, you know, pay whatever bill you need to pay. But I want it on one single sheet of paper. These aren't necessarily going to make me money. It's just a single location. It's a safe spot to write everything down. Another habit I think is even more important now is on that same sheet of paper that I'm writing down how I want to spend my time. I want to physically take a pen and write down what I'm grateful for. You know, this morning I was out walking my dog. It was 27 degrees. The sun was unbelievable. And I just stopped for a moment and said, today I am so grateful for the sun that's out there. We have so many things, but are we aware of them? Or are we intentional about them? Another container on this single sheet of paper is... Um, the psychological triggers that I just need to be reminded of. Am I drinking enough water? Am I getting enough sleep? I have made a commitment for the last three years that I will get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I know my health is better. My productivity is better. Now, I don't know how many people are playing pickleball. I'd love to know. Uh, if you're playing pickleball, go ahead and put it in chat. Just just because that's kind of fun. I'm playing pickleball two to three times a week. It's a cross between tennis, badminton, and ping pong. And it's made a huge difference. How much time every day are you reflecting? Reflecting is a skill. We have to slow down long enough to reflect. How many books are you reading? People don't have time to read anymore, but what would happen if you would read 10 pages of a book a day? In 30 days, you'd read a 300 page book every month. You know, books change our lives. Just being aware of what you're eating. But this bottom piece, did I do what I said I would do today? Getting that self-reflection back. If we're not doing what we said we would do, how can we? Learning and observing. So that's secret number two, is having a written plan of action. But this is the big kicker. The biggest thing that I want you to take away today is what we call five before 11. It's a piece of the real estate that I didn't show you yet. So this is the real, the real key to everything that's changed my business. It's right up here at the top of the daily progress report. Caleb is putting this sheet of paper in your um, chat. Feel free to download it. It's just 
one piece of paper, this five before 11 is the most important takeaway for today. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bigger. Remember the secrets, take ownership of your day. You need a written plan of action. All of these tools come together. We've been used to living in the choke point because we've got 15 things on our to-do list and we can't get them done. So here's how I think your life can really change. If you set a timer for seven minutes and during that seven minutes, you ask yourself, what is my goal for today? And that has to include, how am I gonna grow the revenues of my company? What makes me money? What do I need to do to, to accomplish those things? During that seven minutes, you just are brainstorming. You're writing down every single thing you could do. You're writing down all the things that may not make your business money, but you need to do as a human. You need to go to the grocery store. You need to go to the gym, you know, go to the post office. So you've gotten all these things on a single sheet of paper. This is what we call a capture tool. And you prioritize these things now in order of importance. It's obvious that you can't get everything done, but what would happen if you chose just the five most important things that you would commit to accomplishing before 11 o'clock? What would happen if you had a conversation with someone at your office that said, what really makes us money? What do we really need to accomplish in the first quarter? What's gonna make our customers happy? What's gonna give us innovation that we didn't have last year? Who do we need to hire? What skills do we need to know? Asking those global questions. And then as you filter your day, through these, through these questions, understanding that yes, you could do all of these things, but what are the five most important things that you're gonna let into your daily plan of action today? It's not so much that this choke point, that in the choke point, we try to get more done, we can't get any more done. It's actually filtering out this is my little filter. It's actually learning how to filter out what is less important. And once you go through these filtering questions, what makes my company money? What's my marketing strategy? Who do we need to hire? What does it look like to have vision and mission and values? And then go ahead and create the to-do list. If we don't put it on paper, it swirls through our head like mental clutter. So we've got to get it out on a sheet of paper. We have to look at these things and prioritize them, but don't just create a list of things that look like they may help your business. Truly begin to think about, is this task gonna be one of, I guess one of three things. Is this action that I'm gonna to choose to put in my day gonna make me revenue? We need to really be conscious what products make you money, what services make you money, what's gonna have the most margins in it, all of those things. Or does this task make me happy? Is there anything in my five before 11 list that truly brings me meaning and fulfillment because what we see is that people chase all of these things on their to-do list. And as you go back, like this, this is my planner. As I go back through the days and look at what I've accomplished, when you look at your to-do list, how many things on your to-do list were for you? We put ourselves last. We often get nothing done that brings us meaning and purpose. So by being able to write these things down on a sheet of paper and look at them, I think it can make a big difference. Before I go in, cause I've got about five minutes left. I wanna go in and um, ask some questions. Let's see if I can't delete the ink on this. Hang on one second. Discard the ink. I'm gonna come back into this. 
I just hopefully you've downloaded this sheet or you've uh, taken notes as we've gone along. I want to do just a, a quick kind of overview of why these things are important. Each one of these pieces in our lives, we're either going to have a written plan of action at the beginning of the day, or we're not going to have a written daily plan of action, but the day is still going to end. Let me just kind of pause on that. I want to sink in. We are going to wake up in the morning and either choose to intentionally determine what we're going to focus on, or we're not going to have a plan of action and the day is still going to end. But it's more than that. It was January 1st. It seems like just a blink ago, and now it is February 8th. We're either going to have a plan for the year or we're going to blink our eyes and a month and a half is going to go by. Or it gets even bigger. And when we talk about time management, stopping the chaos was January 1st. Pretty soon it's going to be December 31st. And if we don't come to a place where every day we're putting a stake in the ground and we're being intentional, we're going to blink our eyes. And a year is going to go by or a decade is going to go by. And that's why time management is so important. And it's that daily habit. It's that daily habit of truly. And this is the hard part of picking up Siri and saying, hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes. Counting down. That's what I do every morning. Make sure I can turn it off. That's it, is taking a timer and making a choice to say, yes, I am willing to take seven minutes so that by December 31st of this year, every day will have mattered. It's, it's really important. A single sheet of paper that can become that plumb line of how you wanna live your life, of daily progress, being able to look back and see who are you becoming? Is life meaningful? Am I doing the right things? to create the to-do list, to call the people that you need to know, to keep track of all those things that you haven't finished. What are you most grateful for today? And the beauty of this is at the end of the day, did I do what I said I was going to do today? I don't have to accomplish all of this. What I would like to accomplish is just five important things. And even if I can only accomplish two or three of these, at the end of the day, I want to be able to say to myself, I've done enough. It's that sense of overwhelm. You know, it's impossible to do 15 things. And if you don't get 15 things done from yesterday, now you have 30 things. And the next day you have 90 things. So with this piece of paper, every day is a clean slate. We can't go backwards. It's a clean slate. We print out a new sheet of paper. We put in today's date, we look at what our goals are, and we create a written plan of action based on that. And we narrow it down to what will we do. And here's why this is important. If you would just create this five before 11 list in one week, just in a week, you'd accomplish 35 high value actions. 35 high value actions. You know, I like to pause in all this because my attention span is about the attention span of a gnat. So you'll hear me repeat things. But can you imagine what it would be like, what it would have been like to say, OK, these are the goals that I'm trying to accomplish. These are revenue goals. This is the number of customers. This is the kind of market share we want to have. And then filter it through and say, hey, these are five important things that will drive these results. And just in the next week, accomplish 35 of those. We call those high value actions. If we focus on doing things that we know are right, our business is going to grow. But we also need to focus on things that make our life better. But the seven minute life is not a one week program. The seven minute life is actually a 90 day platform. And we created it as a 90-day platform because of corporate earnings. That's 
when I was an advisor, every 90 days, we had to turn in our quarterly results. But now I've realized that that's how life was created. It's in seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, fall. It is a 90 day platform in life. And there are seasons that I am not at all productive. And sometimes I just want to be glad that that quarter is over and then I'm coming into a new quarter. But if the seven minute life is a 90 day platform, and if I can learn the habit of accomplishing five before 11 on a daily basis, in the next 90 days, you would accomplish 450 high value actions. Imagine as an entrepreneur, these are secrets. These are things that I've learned over the last 25 years. Imagine what it could be like to just physically hit the print button and to say, okay, today, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take ownership. I'm going to have a written plan and I'm just going to do these five things. And if I only get two important things done, that's great. I can get to enough. And at the end of the day, when you print off the next one, you say, okay, I can't go back and reclaim that time. I've got a clean slate. What is most important today? And get rid of that guilt, those overhanging things. So as I wrap up, here's the last piece. I just had three secrets. We need a written plan of action. This is not easy to do. It is easy to print off. It is not easy to create space to take your phone and to ask, I won't say her name, but to ask Siri to set your timer for seven minutes and then to begin to make some intentional choices. It's not easy. I, it's not even always easy for me, but I know when I take that time and create this repeatable process, the big takeaway today is what if, what if I were willing to commit to accomplish five things a day? And what if I realize that this choke point is real and I can't get 15 things done, but I might be able to get five things done. And all it's going to take me is determining 1% of my time to take seven minutes in the morning to plan this. But, oh, there's one final thing. You've created your plan with the daily progress report. You've done your very best to execute it. But in the evening, the same thing happens. You need to set a timer for seven minutes in the evening to hold this sheet of paper in your hands. Now I've, I've got mine in a binder, but to hold this sheet of paper in your hand and reflect on it. Did you have the right things on your to-do list? Did you or did you not complete your five before 11? Did you connect with people? Were you grateful? Did you get enough sleep? Reflecting on that what you can learn and how you can move forward. So these things are important. Caleb, I always love being on these classes. Um, we would love to help in any way we can. If other people, Caleb, are part of foundations or associations or businesses that are in Northwest Arkansas or wherever, I will guarantee you that COVID is causing intense mental health problems. And the communication that we're seeing now, people need to have clear direction in life. And I wanna help solve that. As an entrepreneur, I'm excited about what we're doing. And as an entrepreneur, we need help growing. And so I'm grateful that all of you are on here. I know Caleb is a raving fan, but if you know people that can help us, reach out to us at hello at the seven minute life. So Caleb, those are my thoughts today. Awesome. Well, as always, that was great. Um, really appreciate the secrets um, insight. I'm going to open it up if you're okay with that for questions. If anyone has questions for our remaining few minutes, um, yeah. feel free to drop a question in the chat and I'll read it out loud or, you know, unmute yourself and ask away. Yeah, I love it when people open their video and, and ask questions because there are a lot of questions. Um, and uh, do you schedule a day off? Um, uh, do I have to tell the truth or can I? <laughs> um, 
I actually am taking off um, April 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. It's the first time I've taken off since COVID. So the answer is I have not done a good job of that. Um, but I'm very intentionally taking that time off. Um, there are 10 friends that we've gotten together for the last 35 years, except for the last two years. So, and I'm nervous about it. Yes, you should schedule time off. It is really hard as an entrepreneur to do that. I'm pulled in a lot of different directions. So that's a great question. And this will be the first time I've been off in three years. Matthew asks, what's the most difficult aspect of living in seven minute life? I think it's not being part of the community. You know, we have this learning platform that we've um, that we're launching is weekly classes like this. It's having access to the tools in the Facebook group because what we do on a daily basis is we've created a common language. It's it's hilarious at our team and we have eight people. Did you take your seven minutes? How's your five before 11? What were you grateful for today? So I think the hardest part is creating that, that ongoing process of commitment to creating the repeatable habit. And it is just a habit for me at this point, but Matthew, that is the greatest part. And the other difficult, and I'm I know this is going out via FaceTime, but I think there's part of humans that says, I don't deserve to have time for myself. There's this whole weird guilt thing, martyr thing that goes on in our lives. And I know there's some people on here that are shaking their head, yes, you don't have to put it in chat, but I think the self-care part of that is we cannot continue to work 12 hour days, especially if we're doing things that aren't high value. I mean, imagine if you could just get rid, and a lot of this, this sheet of paper is, at the end of the day, you can look and say, man, I shouldn't have done that. So I think the, the hardest part is realizing that we deserve to live a life with meaning. We deserve to have time for ourselves. We deserve to belong to groups, um, and that it's an effort. But for me, where I am in life, I am intentionally saying, what will make my life happy? What can I do today that is going to be meaningful? And Caleb, what, what fun it is for me. This is, this is my purpose. So getting to do this on a daily basis is, um, I think the, the difficult aspect is not believing that we can do it and not believing we deserve to have ownership of our time. Misty says, um, I am a consultant for multiple businesses with various revenue and goals. How do you recommend I utilize the daily progress report in the best way? Like how can I keep organized by company? What a great question. Um, Caleb, we talked a little bit about this last time. So I think that you can feel free to go ahead and send out. Um, again, this is, and Misty, that, that's a really great question. When I was going through all of these things, this is our learning hub. I tried to solve those by creating tools because I'm a visual person. So if I'm running multiple companies, I would come in and use some of these really, and I think Caleb, you have all of these, so you can send all of these out. Um, it's called the, not bucket list, it's called project buckets. There are two things that I would think would be helpful to you or anyone that really is um, struggling with keeping things in a visual platform. When we're juggling, and this is a good thing to do with your home life as well, but when we're juggling things, by getting a, 50, a simple 50,000 foot overview of here are all the companies I'm working with. I'm consulting with X company, Y company, Z company, and just seeing, literally the titles of the projects that are in front of you and visually taking time to let that soak in and say, okay, here are all the things that I'm working on. And then to go back, let me go back to the tools. So once I've gotten all of them in a visual format where I can see them, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use, we've got a lot of things in here. I'm looking for the five column. Am I on all or goals? I'm sorry, let me change to goals. After I've gotten the buckets down, I'm gonna come in and I'm probably gonna use a five column worksheet. 
So Missy, each company that you then have, I would create a separate one piece. Here's, here's the name of the company. And underneath that name of the company, I would write down every single thing that are the big projects you're working on. And this is a weekend project, um, but being able to write down, here are all the things, these are the things I do for the company, whatever that might be, QuickBooks or HR or whatever. And then just write down all the things, not necessarily hanging over your heads, but all of your roles in one place. So once you've gotten this 50,000 foot view with buckets, and then each one of these buckets, you've created kind of a breakdown. I think lay it out on the ground or tape it to a whiteboard and just look at those things. As you're looking at those things, you're gonna find out that some of your customers don't even make you money. You're gonna be able to look at what isn't important. And by looking at all that, the daily progress report, those, I'm looking at my whiteboard, those pieces of paper become the filter. Does that make sense? And then you can choose what goes on your, uh, on your daily progress report and your five before 11. Because until we really see the big picture, we're swimming, you know, we're just swimming. And Caleb, I would love nothing more than to have a workshop where all day long, we just create our bucket lists and we create our projects. Um, let me see if, if that helps. Um, let me go back to Misty's question. Um, love that, makes sense. Hey, awesome. Who else has a question? And I, I do love to give people time to, we got three minutes left. Caleb, do you have any questions or thoughts about what we're doing? Not off the top of my head, but I just wanna, uh, I'm getting a, uh, a couple of direct messages from others about past worksheets and, and things that we've covered in previous sessions. Um, I'm gonna include those all in our follow-up email that I'll send out later this afternoon. Um, along with this recording with the link to the PDF of today's worksheets, but everything that we've covered so far to date, I'll include in those emails. But you can see why I'm so passionate about this. Now, as an entrepreneur, all of you on here, I'd love to have you reach out to Caleb and tell him, you know, what are things that you need to learn? Because all of these tools are like 58 tools that I created because I needed help. And Misty, you asked just the greatest question of all is that um, when I'm reading a book, as an example, somebody may have already figured out what I need to know. So just with one question, I've shared something that really could save you a year's worth of trouble. And that's why these things I think are really helpful. What a great question. <laughs> and those two tools are in the class that we taught last time. Mm -hmm. Any more questions before we close it down? Don't be shy. Wonderful. Are all of these forms free? Yes, through Startup Junkie, what you've seen today is free. And it's because of our relationship with Startup Junkie. This is what we sell. Um, can I show them actually what we, so Absolutely. your stuff Absolutely. is free, but you guys may work for companies. Um, I'd love to show you actually, let's see where I can find that. You'd think I'd know that, don't you? Um, I'm, I'm not a, can you see my screen? Can you see what's on my screen? Mm -hmm. Sure can. So actually what we sell is access to all of this. And I'm hoping that someone on here is best friends with the human relations company at somewhere. Um, so we've created, like right now, we have a seven week masterclass that I'd love to get some foundations to sponsor. This is seven weeks, two hours um, a week of going through that. And it's a thousand dollars. We've just launched this huge learning platform. Um, one of the sectors that we're focusing on is real estate. Um, because they're very stressed. And so this is our product that we sell. Everything I do with Startup Junkie is completely free. I'm giving that away because it's meaningful and purposeful to me. But our public uh, platform 
what we've created is live classes. I teach classes two to four a month. Um, we've created crazy cool technology, um, all kinds of classes. And so, our, let me just get down here. And we would love to have you help us, you know, sell it. So Misty, um, we've created this platform for $30 a month. It's a SaaS technology platform, which is why we need Caleb's help is that, you know, I know how to do time management, but I certainly didn't know how to build a SaaS technology platform. And I've raised $1.3 million of startup capital to do this. And so it's not 38 tools, it's actually like 60 tools and webinars and boot camps and online. And so everything we do, but where we've grown the money is, uh, or where we're using the money is that people need access to the physical tools, not just the print tools, but also the digital tools, which we're not talking. But if I can come into a company and truly help them understand um, under self-discovery, what's most important to your employees? You know, what are their priorities in life? What's their purpose? Um, what's holding them back? So that's what I do. And I truly, we do need help um, sharing the message with people. So it is all free through Startup Junkie. N not the whole membership platform, but all these classes are free. All right. Well. Uh, again, Allison, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to share with everybody. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining and participating. Like I said, I'm going to send all of this stuff to you in a follow-up email here shortly, uh, actually probably later this afternoon. Um, but again, appreciate it. Look for our next webinar. Let's see. Let me pull that up real quick just to make sure I want to say it is March. Da, 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 da. March 16th is our next workshop. So go to our Star Junkie face, our Star Junkie website, uh, go to our events tab and register for that so you can see and receive all the information. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Thanks, oh, Caleb. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.